What can only be described as DeFi season is now happening in the cryptocurrency space. The consistent release of DeFi protocols has resulted in a total value of the blockchain space exceeding $9 billion. While some of these protocols are not particularly noteworthy, others are breaking the rules of traditional finance and introducing new technologies that were thought to be impossible. UMA is one such protocol. We'll leave you a link to buy UMA below this video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like it. Stay tuned, it will be interesting. Ethereum's white paper states, providing users with more serious methods of managing and contracting with personal funds. UMA seeks to extend this effort with a specification for decentralized financial contracts. Traditionally, individuals and businesses could only buy and sell exchange-traded assets backed by local government and infrastructure. Sophisticated institutional investors have been able to circumvent these problems by using over-the-counter derivatives that eliminate the need to physically own or hold assets. But these instruments were not available to ordinary traders. Blockchain-based smart contracts benefit all market participants, giving everyone the ability to buy or sell any financial asset. UMA, short for Universal Market Access, is a protocol built on Ethereum that allows users to create their own collateralized synthetic cryptocurrency tokens that can track the price of almost anything. Simply put, UMA allows you to trade any asset using ERC-20 tokens without having any actual exposure to the asset itself. This allows anyone to access assets that would otherwise be unavailable. The UMA cryptocurrency token is used to control the protocol and its pricing oracle. Why is UMA so important? Because it opens up a world of possibilities for DeFi. For example, you can put some DAI into compounds so others can borrow, which earns you some amount of interest per year. When you do this, you are given a DAI tokens that earn interest. Since UMA allows you to use almost any asset as collateral, you can use a DAI as a collateral to mint synthetic tokens representing, say, the price of gold. You can then create a synthetic token that only tracks the price of gold but also generates a 10% annual return through a blocked ADAI. To fully understand UMA, we first need to look at a few key terms. UMA places derivatives on the blockchain. It creates a synthetic token for an asset when sufficient collateral is deposited, creates contract terms for the issued token, and enforces them with financial incentives. Instead of using a price oracle to determine when a token issuer has insufficient collateral, UMA users are given a financial incentive to identify and liquidate token issuers that they believe are insufficiently collateralized. Ironically, UMA considers the use of oracles to be one of the biggest problems in DeFi, primarily because they are prone to failure during black swan financial events and because they can be manipulated if there is enough money on the table to ruin an oracle. Instead, UMA only uses its oracle to resolve liquidation disputes. Synthetic tokens in the UMA system create a decentralized application by running a smart contract. When a user deposits DAI, it can issue synthetic assets fully collateralized by the deposited DAI. The redundant collateralization of the tokens ensures that the synth are fully backed at all times which means anyone buying them will have confidence in their culturalization. At the same time, anyone can use the smart contract to check whether their tokens are sufficiently backed. In the process, the smart contract checks what the last price from the price history was and whether the DAI amount supported in the contract matches the specified amount. Synthetic tokens are pretty hard to comprehend. Fortunately, a page from UMA's detailed documentation provides perhaps the best possible definition. Synthetic tokens are ERC-20 backed tokens whose value fluctuates based on the token's reference index. Synthetic tokens are derivative contracts on the Ethereum blockchain. These tokens have three characteristics. They have a price identifier. They have an expiration date. They have a collateral requirement which can vary but must be at least 120% of the value of the tokens issued. For example, to issue $100 worth of synthetic gold tokens, you would need $120 of cryptocurrency locked as collateral. Although UMA is conceptually complex, 
understanding how it works is surprisingly easy. At its core, UMA includes three elements. Its structure for creating synthetic token contracts on the blockchain, its data validation mechanism, and its management protocol. Token facility refers to a smart contract on UMA that allows the creation of synthetic tokens representing an asset. Anyone can create a smart contract in token facility by defining observing characteristics. The entity that creates the smart contract for the synthetic tokens is called the token owner. At this point, any other user can participate in a smart contract to release more tokens by making a deposit. These participants are called token sponsors. For example, person A creates a smart contract to create synthetic gold tokens and contributes the necessary collateral. Person B thinks that this synthetic gold token might be valuable and wants to issue some tokens himself, so he deposits collateral to issue more synthetic gold tokens. Unlike other DeFi protocols, the UMA protocol does not require a fixed price to work. That's why both UMA and DVM alone are called priceless. Other protocols such as AVI use oracles to eliminate borrowers if they do not have sufficient collateral by constantly checking the price of their collateral. Rather than constantly checking the price of assets blocked as a collateral, UMA encourages token holders to constantly check that the issuer of that token is properly collateralized. They do this by checking the amount of collateral locked in the smart contract and then doing simple math to see if the collateral requirement is met. If not, they may require liquidation of a portion of the issuer's collateral. UMA is well aware that there is no rule of law in the cryptocurrency space. This makes many elements in it susceptible to corruption, including oracles. To combat the possibility of DVM corruption, UMA uses a simple metric. The cost of damaging an oracle must always remain higher than the potential profit that can be made in this way. This entails a three-step process in which the cost of corruption must be measured, where the profit from corruption must be measured, and to create a mechanism in which the COC is always greater than the POC. Since the price the DVM Oracle assigns is based on the majority of other network members' vote, 51%, it requires a minimum of 5% of all tokens to be used in the vote. The price of corruption is more than 51% of all tokens. UMA tokens are used for price voting. To estimate POC, all smart contracts that issue synthetic tokens must report the potential profit that can be extracted from them if the Oracle is corrupted. The sum of the value of all assets in the various smart contracts on the UMA provides the POC. To ensure that COC is always greater than POC, UMA burns the UMA tokens that are currently on the market to ensure that their value is always greater than the total number of assets locked into the protocol. This is paid for using a tax that is levied on token holders. The UMA protocol only charges what it needs to, no more, no less. When it comes to governance, UMA token holders have two responsibilities to vote on the price of the asset when requesting DVM and to vote on changes and or updates to the UMA protocol. Regarding these changes and updates, UMA token holders can introduce new assets, deleting existing smart contracts that are not in use and even close smart contracts in case of an emergency. Proposals for improvements to the UMA can be made by anyone and involve a sort of standardized public ballot application. Standard consensus rules apply, meaning that one token equals one vote, and 51% of tokens must vote for the proposal. If approved by the community, the Risk Labs development team implements the change. Risk Labs can also decide to reject the proposed change even if it receives a majority vote in support of the proposal. Those who vote are rewarded with inflation, which is distributed in proportion to the percentage of the total supply they put in. Inactive UMA holders are not rewarded with this additional inflation. This incentivizes inactive UMA token holders to actually participate in the UMA protocol. UMA is an ERC20 token used to manage the UMA protocol and to vote the price of the asset when the DVM oracle is called to challenge a collateral liquidation claim. Although its original stock was 100 million, it has no hard limit and can be inflationary 
and deflationary, depending on two elements, the amount of value currently in the protocol and the number of UMAs used to vote in the protocol. The token is traded on the decentralized exchanges Balancer, Uniswap, as well as the centralized Binance, OKEx, AX, and Gate.io. As an example, let's review the process of its purchase at Gate.io. It is one of the old proven trading platforms with a good level of liquidity. The great thing about DeFi tokens like UMA is that no matter how complex they are, storing them is always easy because almost all of them are ERC20 tokens built on Ethereum. Thus, you can store your UMA on almost any wallet wallet that supports Ethereum assets. UMA cryptocurrency wallets include Trezor, Ledger, Exodus, Atomic Wallet, and of course MetaMask, a popular web wallet used to interact with DeFi protocols. Thanks for watching this video. Check out the channel for more videos.